Okay, so you've done it. You've graduated high school, you got accepted into your dream college or university. What now? Now the transition from high school to post-secondary can be very drastic and potentially really unforgiving as well. But luckily enough for you guys, I've already gone through all the hardships that come with it so that you won't have to. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys my top five tips for aspiring students to set yourself up for success. Now these tips are gonna come from the perspective of an engineering major because that is what I am, but don't worry if you're not going into engineering because all the tips are gonna be universally applicable regardless of what major you choose. Now I'm also gonna be using the word university instead of college for the rest of the video, and that's just because I went to university, so that's what I have experience with. But once again, don't worry if you're going into college, all the tips are gonna be universally applicable regardless. Now without further ado, let's get right into the first tip, which is... So when I say don't get comfortable, what I mean is don't expect university or college to go the exact same way high school did for you. You might have been an A plus student who easily breezed through the first 12 years of schooling, but realistically speaking, university is not gonna go the same way. Now, what I'm about to tell you genuinely isn't a flex and you'll find out why in a second, but I was in the same position that a lot of you might be in right now. I was a straight A student all the way from elementary school up to high school. You know, I was in a lot of accelerated programs, IB programs, and I won tons of academic awards. And once I got to university, none of that meant anything. I started university four years ago and I still remember it like it was yesterday. One of the first midterms I ever wrote was for Calculus 1, Introduction to Calculus. And I remember walking into that exam fairly confident in my ability to do well, given my, you know, successful academic history. And by the time I finished that exam, I just remember walking out of that room feeling the most defeated I ever have been in my entire life. And that's because it was one of the most difficult exams I had written up to that point. Two weeks later, the grades were released, and what do you know, I scored a solid 56%. So going from being someone who easily scored high 90s on all my exams while barely studying, to being someone who almost had to skip every single question on the exam because I didn't know how to do them, that was a huge wake up call for me. And I think it was really important that I experienced that early on because it helped me figure things out moving forward from there. In my opinion, going from high school to university, you're gonna experience a massive jump in pace, intensity, and obviously course difficulty. In a lot of cases, especially in larger classes, there's a good chance your professor won't even know your face or your name for that matter. To them, you're just gonna be a student ID number that they assign a grade to. So attending classes, taking notes, completing assignments, going to office hours, these are all things that no one else is gonna push you to do, so you have to develop and maintain a certain level of discipline in order to succeed. There are even some cases like my engineering program where the system is literally designed to set you up for failure. And that was done to weed out the people who didn't really have what it took to perform under immense amounts of stress and pressure. So it's always important to remember, guys, don't get comfortable. Developing good study habits early on in your degree is one of the most valuable things you can do. If you were like me in high school, chances are you didn't really study for your exams, and if you did, it was only a bit of light review or cramming the day before the exam. And even if you did study a lot in high school, chances are your study habits weren't nearly as time efficient as they'll need to be for university level courses. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but if you feel like you didn't have enough free time in high school, the transition to university is going to be very difficult for you because you're going to have even less free time. Time is one of those things that we take for granted, which is why it's so important to learn how to manage it, and having good study habits is a good place to start. Now, I'm not gonna go too in-depth into specific study techniques like spaced repetition, active recall, and things like that. Instead, what I'm gonna focus on is this idea of building a system. Having systems in place that you follow can be beneficial in all aspects of life, but I find it to be especially helpful when it comes to studying. The way I see it, a system is a procedural way to complete a task in order to achieve a desired outcome, and this is really easily applicable to studying. Being able to understand and apply the concepts is the desired outcome, studying is the task, and the system is the actions or steps that you take in order to do that as effectively or efficiently as possible. Now developing these systems can sometimes be challenging, especially when you're not too sure about what strategies suit you best, so I suggest trying a multitude of different things until you find a system that sort of works the best for you. Unfortunately, it can be a trial and error process, but it's so worth it in the end because you'll end up with a system that you can use for the rest of your degree. 
I'll talk about the system that I came up with in a second here, but before that, another thing we need to consider is how your courses are weighted. The weighting scheme of your course can vary drastically depending on your major and the nature of the courses that you're taking. Some courses are heavily weighted towards exams and tests, and less weighted towards assignments and labs, whereas other courses are weighted the complete opposite, so it really depends. You might also take some classes that give out participation marks, so it's another thing to consider when you're trying to develop your system. To use myself as an example, I'm an electrical engineering major, so the majority of my courses were heavily weighted towards exams and less towards labs and assignments. This could look something like 10% towards assignments, 15% towards labs, 30% towards a midterm, and 45% towards a final. Now, I'm not the type of person that absorbs knowledge very easily just by listening to lectures and taking down notes, so I had to consider that when I was coming up with my system. So what I did was, I used my assignments and labs as learning tools since they weren't nearly weighted as much as my exams. As I was doing my assignments, I focused a lot more on the concepts I was applying rather than refining the final product. In other words, I focused a lot more on the process rather than the results. Then when it came to midterms or finals, I would lightly review my notes and maybe the textbook for about a week before the exam, and then two days before my exam, I would test my ability to apply the concepts by doing practice problems and sample exams, as well as redoing old assignment questions, roughly about three to four hours each day. I also found that it was easier to retain information when I did this right before I went to bed. It's going to look a little different for each person. That's what worked for my study style and the courses I took, but it might not apply to you. That's why I put so much emphasis on this point of developing good study habits early and solidifying a system that works for you. All right, so tip number three is make friends. This is a big one guys, if you want to make the most out of the time that you spend in university, making friends early on is one of the best ways to enhance your experience and it's really beneficial not only for your academic life but also your life outside of school. I know you're probably thinking, well just make friends, it's easier said than done and I agree, you know I'm generally pretty introverted myself and I understand that talking to people you don't know can be very daunting but I promise you won't regret trying. Some people get really lucky and end up in the same school or even the same program as their friends from high school, but for most of us that isn't going to be the case, which is why I think the best place to start is your classes. It could be something as simple as taking a seat next to someone you see sitting alone in a lecture, asking the person next to you a clarification question on what the professor said, or even reaching out to a few of your classmates to start a study group. It doesn't really matter what you do, but as long as you make a conscious effort to develop connections with the people around you and you stay genuine, you will make friends. The way I see it is, there's a good chance you're going to be forced to work with your classmates in some capacity anyways, whether it be a partner assignment, a group project, or even a lab, so there's no harm in familiarizing yourself with your peers. You might not have much in common in terms of your life before university, but now you're all in the same boat. Personally, I found that mutual suffering was actually the easiest way to relate to my classmates, and it helped me develop some really strong bonds with the people I call my best friends today. If you do this, what you'll end up with is an additional support group, a sort of lifeline that you can look to for help with exam prep, assignments, and just life in general, and to me, that's absolutely invaluable. Now with that being said, it's also important to keep in mind that you shouldn't be depending on your friends for your academic success. Being lazy and copying homework answers or asking for summary notes, those are all things that are going to hurt you in the long run and you still need to put in the individual work yourself. The analogy I like to use is your friends are there to hold your hand, not to carry you on their backs. Academics aside, I think making friends is also really valuable just because of the sheer diversity that can be found in most universities. In most cases, your university is going to be much larger than your high school, which usually translates to a much more diverse population. And I don't just mean diverse in race or culture, I also mean diverse in ideologies, beliefs, values, and experiences. You're in an environment where you're surrounded by brilliant people from all walks of life, so personally, I think it would be a waste to not try and take advantage of that. People often say that university is a formative experience, and I would actually agree, but rather than the things that you do or the events that you participate in, I actually think it's the people you meet that have the biggest impact on who you become. To put it simply, I wouldn't be the person I am today if it weren't for certain people I met during my time at university. All of my ideologies, values, beliefs, they were adopted and interpreted from the friends I made and ultimately helped shape me into the person I am today. 
And that's what I think is so valuable about it. The fact that you're able to interact with people who might have opposing ideas and beliefs, and you're able to take those interactions and use them to help you define what kind of person you are or what kind of person you want to become. It's the ultimate tool for self-discovery. Now you might be wondering, how exactly do I meet and interact with diverse people outside of my classes? And that leads me to my next tip, which is... Alright, so tip number four is participate in extracurriculars and school events. Unless you go to the most boring university on the planet, there's a decent chance your school is going to have clubs, fairs, sports events, and other random activities that I definitely would recommend checking out. These can be split up into two main categories and they're beneficial for two different reasons. The first category is going to be clubs and student governing bodies. These are going to be really beneficial for developing technical and soft skills and that's especially helpful for anyone who's planning to go into a co-op program or a program that may require you to look for summer internships. You're going to be able to develop a lot of technical skills that are going to look impressive on your resume and that can give you an edge over other students who don't take that same initiative. So in my case, I went into an electrical engineering co-op program, so I knew I needed to develop some sort of technical skills in order to strengthen my resume before I started my job search. So what I did was I joined a robotics club and I also joined a Hyperloop design team. And I learned a lot of useful things and had a lot of fun while spending time working on both of these projects. The skills I learned were really relevant to my field and even though there's no way to tell for sure, I'd like to think that they did help me find my first co-op placement. Even if you won't be looking for any co-op jobs or internships, I still definitely recommend checking out some clubs that you might be interested in because technical experience aside, it's still a really great way to build on your soft skills such as communication, teamwork, and leadership and those are all going to be really helpful for your career moving forward. There's also usually a really large variety of clubs that cater to different majors and different interests, so you're not really limited in that sense either. I was never really into the whole student governing thing, but if that's up your alley, then I would also definitely recommend looking into running for some of those positions. Usually most schools will have a student's union where you can run for various executive positions or even president if you're feeling ambitious. Faculties will also have their own governing associations and you can run for positions there as well and you'll gain similar experience, just more faculty specific. It's also important to keep in mind that clubs and student governing bodies are going to require a time commitment outside of your regular school hours, but if you think you can manage, then I definitely recommend giving it a shot. Now the second category is going to be things like sports events, fairs, and other activities, and these are going to be really beneficial for just your general health and well-being. Most schools are usually going to have a various number of events that go on throughout each semester and I definitely recommend checking these out. These are things like school sports games, charity and fundraiser events, school spirit week, and other things like that that can generally just be a really fun way to spend some of your free time. If you're the more athletic type, I would also recommend looking into intramurals or other school-run sports leagues because they're a really good way to keep up with your physical health and also have fun while you're doing it. Don't forget that, like I said before, these types of events as well as clubs are a really great way to meet new people and potentially make some really good friends. Now attending these things are not mandatory whatsoever, but I still think it's a really important point to consider because you can benefit a lot from participating in clubs and school events. Despite what a lot of people might think, there's so much more to university than just getting a degree, which leads me to my next point. So tip number five is enjoy the experience and take risks. This ties in pretty much with everything I've talked about up to this point, but you really should try and enjoy the experience that is university. Trust me, I know more than anyone how easy it is to drown yourself in your studies and grind for weeks on end, but burnout is real and it'll catch up to you very quickly. Developing a good school life balance is another one of those skills that I suggest learning early on because it helps you maximize your university experience. I feel like what a lot of people don't realize is even though your education is really important, when you're in university, the stakes are still pretty low in the grand scheme of things, so it's the best time to have fun and take risks. I don't want to get all depressing here, but the four to six years that you spend in university are going to go by way faster than you could possibly imagine. 
once you graduate, you're gonna be out in the real world, you're gonna have a real job and real responsibilities, and you're gonna have a lot less time to do the things that you wanna do. So take risks, go on that date, go to that party, try that side hustle, start a business, do all the things that you won't necessarily have the luxury to do later on in life. Trust me when I say, regretting not doing something that you wish you would have done is one of the worst feelings in the world, and I wouldn't wish it upon anyone, which is why I'm telling you guys this. The point I really want to drive home is, I understand that people can be really hard on themselves, myself included, especially when it comes to academics, but you really should give yourself permission to take breaks and enjoy life. Trust me when I say, getting a B- and having fun is way better than getting an A+, and being absolutely miserable all the time. Unless you want to go to med school. If that's the case, well, maybe you just might need to suffer a little bit. Anyways guys, those are my top five tips for any students that are gonna be attending university or college for the first time. If you'd like to see videos that go more in depth into any of the topics that I discussed in this one, just let me know down in the comments below because I'm more than willing to make them. I'm also open to answering any questions that you guys might have, whether it be about university or anything else. So if you do have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below or message me on Twitter and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them. This is the type of video I wish I would have watched when I started university, so I made it with that in mind. With that being said, if you guys found it helpful in any way, if you learned even just one thing from this video, it's safe to say that I did my job. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching till the end. I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.